Hello, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, let's do a review and a comparison of the three probably most popular Louis Vuitton card holders. So we have the Recto Verso, which is this one. We then have the flat card holder, which is this one. And this comes in many of the canvases and prints. And then we have the long card holder, which is this one. And this is actually from the men's collection. These, I love all three of these and I intend to keep all three of these. I think they all have their own strengths for certain occasions. Some of them certainly do have weaknesses as well and we'll go through that. But I think having three of them, for me, I can justify having three of them. In case you're interested in any of these, let's do a review of them all and a comparison to see which would work for you. And let's start with the Recto Verso from Louis Vuitton. Now, I do have a video on my channel which is an in-depth review of this. And if you're interested in this piece, do watch that video because there's wear and tear on that video that has since been repaired. So this, uh, although if you watch that video, I hands up say that I put this through the mill. Whenever I filmed that video, I got so many comments about how much I had abused this Recto Verso because the one thing you can do about this and what I would say about this one over and above both of these is you can fit so much into this. Now, by fitting so much into it, I probably did abuse it a bit. But if you're someone that needs to carry a lot of cards, money, receipts, this definitely will fit more than both of these. I had this filled to the point where hmm, it was a little bit embarrassing actually. It was it was really, really full. You can get a lot into this. So if you're interested in this, do watch this that video. What had happened to mine is you see the V here, the glazing on the top of this had peeled off here and the glazing on another piece of it somewhere else had also peeled off. You could actually see the glazing lifting up in strips coming off this. But I took it into Louis Vuitton, I showed them the issue with the glazing and they took it back and they repaired it free of cost. So they did stand over their product and it has come back to me good as new. I have used it since, although I've tried not to abuse it just as badly, but I have used it since and there's been no repetition of the glazing issues on this one. The beauty about the Recto Verso is it has these three card holder slots here and the one that goes in here. Now, I certainly had more than four cards in this. You can fit in this at least a card in each of these and I had some of them doubled up, if I'm honest. The way that I use it now whenever I'm wearing this is I don't double them up. You can see that the slots in mine are still pretty tight. They haven't really stretched out, but I think if you were to fill these with two and three cards, you would push them out to the point that they started to look a little bit stretched. And I don't want to mind to get to that point because I, I know I've already heavily used it. So I now keep one card in each of these. The beauty of the Recto Verso though, is you have this which has a gusset on the side. So the gusset on this one opens this up quite wide, almost like a full purse. If we take this, which is the longest and fits obviously certainly more than the short card holder or the flat card holder. The gusset on this one, I just don't find is as wide. I don't think it gives as much. You can see at the side, it does have one, but without overly stretching it, if you look at the difference between the space that you have in the Recto Verso, that I feel like I'm kind of forcing that apart to be that wide. This one certainly has more give. I think maybe just whatever this type of leather is, maybe it's built that this just gives a little bit more give, but I certainly think you can fit, you can fit more in the zip pocket in this one than in this one. That being said, because this one isn't as wide, I haven't abused it as much. I don't fit, I don't put as much into this and it's kept it sitting relatively neat. Whereas when I did have this one overly stuffed, I had this looking like a proper wallet and it was quite bulging. I don't do that now. I don't put as much in the middle whenever I use it. I do put what I need to put in it, but I'm just as conscious not to really overstuff it. So this has quite a good capacity. You can get quite a lot in there if you need to carry extra coins, extra cards, any receipts, any paper money I put in there. And when I am carrying a little bit of cash or coins, if I don't have my round Louis Vuitton coin purse with me, I do put a little bit of cash in here. The Recto Verso also comes with this and this is the only one of these three pieces that has this with it. These don't have it. This has the key holder, a bit like the key clay. So you could attach your car fob onto this. I have on occasion put my car fob onto this and let it hang outside of the Recto Verso. So as it's hanging down here and it's not uh, fitting in here, I'm totally 
packing it out. I have before, confession time, put keys on this and put them in there and it was really, really bulky. It really did impact the shape of the Rectoverso and it made this zip part really, really slanty and skew with and it was going like this whenever I had the key fob in it. I don't actually think my key fob anyway fit in it comfortably. I think it was too bulky and I think it just impacted the shape too much. So I don't actually really use this. This, although if you did want to hang it onto your bag, onto your jeans or whatever, or you wanted to put your keys on it, you do have that option. I suppose if you had flatter keys and you put them in there with nothing else, it wouldn't be quite as bad as when I put the key fob in. When I put the key fob in, very, very bulky. The Rectoverso then has another slot down here where you can put more cards, you can put more receipts, you can put more bills in there. So this is actually very deceptive on how much it fits. You can fit an awful lot in here. This definitely holds the most out of the three. You then also have this little envelope pocket on the front where you can put more cards, you can put cash, you can put receipts, whatever you need into it. This, I think, if you're looking for one that's almost got the same functionality and capabilities and capacity as a traditional wallet, this is probably the best. I think you can fit the most in it and I think you can make this work like a purse or a wallet better than you can these two. I think these two, obviously this one more than this, but these are more traditionally, I think, fit the fill or the bill of a card holder. Whereas this one, I think you can make this work almost like a purse. I love this little guy. What I did purchase for mine is this little wrist attachment. One of you guys actually gave me this or this idea. I will have this link down below on my Amazon storefront or on Amazon. This was very, very inexpensive. I think it was about six or eight dollars. And what I do is I click this onto here and then it becomes, it just becomes so usable. I love this. I would take this on my wrist if I'm getting out of the car and just running into the garage or the store or I need to pick a few things up. I will have this hanging from me. I'm completely hands free. And I think having this wristlet attached onto this as inexpensive as this was, I just think it's a game changer for this and it makes this piece so, so usable. I did get a couple of comments when I first said about that, about the traction or the friction that I'm putting on the zip by having this, especially with how much I put in mine. There is no real wear other than what you would expect to see as normal wear and tear on the zip. It hasn't really seems to have impacted it or it hasn't pulled the stitching or anything at the side of mine it's all exactly as it would have been I think even if I didn't have the wristlet attached to it so I don't think that's caused any additional wear but it definitely definitely makes it very very usable for something that was so inexpensive I just like the look of it these came in every color so you could put it whatever way you wanted I got the pink one and I get a huge amount of use out of this the one that I would probably use Second to this is this one and this is the one that I'm using at the moment and I've been using this for quite some time. This is the zipped long card holder from the men's range and if I can find any of these I will link them down below. It is in a very very stunning leather. What I personally like over this rather than the Recto Verso probably isn't going to come as a shock and it's the colours and the choice of colours that this comes in. This is the terrain leather. I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce that. But it is that particular type of leather. I have mine in the orangey red colour. It's probably more orange than red. These also came in a stunning pink. They come in a stunning blue. These come out in very, very exciting and vibrant colours as part of the men's range. The Rectoverso not so much, although I do think it now has come out with a yellow on it, which against the monogram is really, really beautiful. It has now come out, I think, in the Damiera bean. So they are starting to introduce more versions of this, but I, I don't think you get the same variety as you get in these. Although when these come out in the bright colours, they can sell pretty quickly. But this one, probably my second to use. I love the colour of it. And one of the reasons why I go for this above the Rectoverso at times is when I look in my bag, I just see this colour and it makes me happy. If you're not as much of a colour freak as me, that won't have the same sort of impact. But certainly that's one of the reasons I'm drawing to this. When you're wearing them in bags, if you like mini bags like I do, you can see quite a collection of mini bags in the background. This is thinner. This takes up more space in your bag than the Rectoverso does. The men's long card holder is very slightly longer than the Rectoverso, so it takes up more length, 
but the recto verso just with the construction of it and when you put anything into it is a little bit thicker and takes up a bit more space in your mini bag. I think the men's long work card holder can slot into your mini bag into a very slim space easier than this can. I just think this is a bit bulkier and takes up a bit more space where th this is very streamlined. This is the one, as I say, I'm using at the minute. I have used this quite a bit. I suppose one of the downsides of this being a bright colour is you will see on the card slots, you'll see there's starting to be some discoloration where my cards are going in and out and it actually looks like it's getting a little bit dirty on the leather from the frequent use. There hasn't been the same glazing issue on this one. This is completely perfect. There's no glazing on that one. You can see the slight stretching. You can see probably on the bottom one there the best, but these card slots are starting to stretch out a little bit. Again, I learned my lesson from the Recto Verso. I don't overstuff them. The one at the top here has two cards in it and the rest of them have one card in it whenever I am using it. As I said, the gusset is there, but this does not have the same capacity as the Recto Verso. It does have enough though. The construction of this almost forces what you put it in to stay quite slim and it stays quite neat. So when you're putting it in there, I haven't had the same problem with this zip going all over the place. And if we move on to the front, it does have this slot across here. Now I have a car parking ticket in mine, but again, this is slightly tighter than it is on this one. The slip that you have in behind here, I suppose with this being the coated canvas and this being the leather, there just seems to be more give in this and you definitely can fit more in behind there. Whereas in this one, the most I ever have in here is a few seats and maybe a car park ticket, as you can see. So this is Neverly, Neverly, is that even a word? This is Neverly over, Neverly, I said it again. This is never overly filled, if I could get my words right. And it does mean that I carry less in this one, but it also means that I don't abuse the shape of it as much. I really do love this. I think it has certainly more capacity than a flat card holder, which is this one. Probably more a tradition. It's on the floor. Now it's back in my hand, but there is really good capacity in this for being a card holder. The leather is really good. There's a bit of give in it. It comes in really bright colors and I really love using this. Then bringing us on to the third, which is the traditional flat card holder. And I have some cards in the middle of mine. Now I have mine in the very bright pink print, which I think was part of the Eclipse collection. I love the colors of this. I will always have a flat card holder in my collection for very mini bags. If I'm going out and I'm using the Petite Mal, for example, or I'm using the Super Gucci, no Gucci Super Mini, which is down here in the corner, or using one of my very small bags, or if I'm very short for space, this is what I will use. All I normally put in here is one card in this side, one card in this side, and then maybe a couple in the middle. I don't overly fill this because I don't want it to get really, really loose. If this got really loose, I think your cards could fall out of it. Mine has never had that problem because it hasn't been overly filled. You can get these in some fabulous, fabulous colours. Bestie has one of these in the monogram with his initials on it and he has his filled to the brim. There is much more in his than is in mine. It doesn't fall out because he keeps it filled. It's definitely stretched more, but the capacity on his, I suppose, shows what it can hold. He has a lot of cards in his, he has cash in it, and it certainly still looks pretty much as good as the day that he bought it. And get, having the option to put your initials on these as well is a really nice touch. I think these are really good for whenever you want something flat. I do think they have a real purpose. They're obviously more restricted than either of those. I don't think these are a day-to-day -day wallet for most people, unless all you're carrying is a couple of cards and a bit of cash. Certainly for me, putting receipts in and things like that, I find both of those more usable on a day-to-day -day basis. But these for an evening out or a smaller bag, I think are fab. Mine I have had for quite some time. There's no problem with the glazing on this at all. I think this is in really good condition for the amount of time it's been used. This gets quite a lot of use for me and it gets use every time we go on holiday. Okay, let's go back to how I first started filming with Talking Hands and have a look at what fits in each of these for anybody that's interested in buying any of these card holders. I have in this pile 10 credit card style cards, which are the plastic credit cards to show you how they will fit. I have over here a pile of loyalty cards, which are the stamp cards that you would get, which are more paper, not a strong plastic to fit in. I also have a pile of receipts. I have some coins and I have some cash here and I'll show you what fits in each of these so as you can make an informed decision if you're looking for any of them. I think we'll start with this one because this is probably the easiest because it's the one that's going to fit the least. 
And if I put two of the credit cards in here, one at each side, you're not really going to fit any more in. You could put, there's two little plastic loyalty cards that I can slip down in the middle, but you can see how tight that is. I generally don't put two in each of these because I think it would really stretch it out and they would fall out. And this is about the most that I put in the middle. The only other thing I might do is I put a little bit of cash in there. I'm not going to put any coins, probably unless I'm really stuck. But that's two credit card type cards, two loyalty cards and one cash note in there. And that's probably about the way that should be. That's probably about as much as I would put in it. I think any more you can already see that starting to lift out a little bit. You're going to stretch it. Now none of that's going to fall out. That's perfectly safe to keep it like that. Even your money's not going to fall out in the middle. But it's not, they're not made to hold a huge amount. They're made if you need something small, flat, not going to take up too much room. And that's what I generally use these for. Now if we move on to the two that are probably more comparable, that's the Rectoverso on this one. And I still have my little wristlet attached. And then the long flat, oh look, money, more money. <laughs> the long flat card holder from the men's line, which is over here. Now you can see, would I take everything out of mine? You can see that's quite stretched out and I don't overfill it. This one just generally doesn't fit just as much as this one. But you can see that it's been stretched out more. There's nothing in that and you can see it's sitting quite full as if there's still stuff in it. Whereas this one, for how much I had stuffed it with, it's not stretched out at all. It's went back to its shape and it's held really well. So let's start with the long card holder and I will show you what fits in this okay, one. To start off, I have four credit cards in the back of this in the slots. I only double up the back one. So whenever I am using this, I have two in this back one and then I have one and all of the rest of them and you can see that they're still sitting quite tight. I have in the middle of this six other cards which are credit cards and then I have the cash that was sitting. So if we were to show how this one is going to fit you can see that this is getting quite full. So there's six credit cards in here and there's about five cash notes in this. If I were to put these three coins in as well just to show you and then in this pile, I have five loyalty cards. So if we put those in there as well, and I maneuver them around the coins, you can see that is the five credit cards, five loyalty cards and the cash. Now I never normally have that much in it. You can see how full that is. If I zip it up, it's okay, it closes, but you can see that it is getting quite wide across the little gusset. And you can see whenever I open it how full it is. Now these receipts, if I were to put these in there as well, I can do it. But again, it's getting fuller. I'm having to push it down a little bit. All I have in this is a car parking ticket in this side. So I don't really ever put too much in that. It's not very wide. And if you were to put more in that, you're going to push that out. And you're going to really overfill that, I think, and stretch the leather. You can already see that mine sits out a little bit from what goes in it and that's not very much. That's with all of that in it, but you can see if you're looking in there, it's quite bulky, it's quite full and it's gonna be hard to get your things and it's gonna be hard to get your coins. Now, if we move on and compare that with the Rectoverso, so far I have the same four credit cards down the back of this and then in the Rectoverso, I have the other six credit cards and I have the cash in here. If we then add the same five loyalty cards into this one, you can see that it is still very full. We can lay that across the top. But when we zip this one up, because it has the gusset in it that goes down the side, I do think that makes a difference. So when we zip this one up, it doesn't really look just as full. Now this one does hold the same and you saw it hold the same. But I think whenever you look in it, you can see that it is, if I take this out to show you, you can see that it is probably a little bit neater in this one. Although to be fair, there's not a huge amount between them. Let's put the coins in to do everything exactly the same. Put the coins in and put the receipts in. That is with everything in it. That's the six credit cards. That's the five loyalty cards. That's the receipts and all of the cash. We can lay that down across here and I'll show you what it looks like zipped up. So zipped up is where this one probably maintains its neatness just a little more but there's really not a huge amount between them. I think this probably does hold a bit more because if we needed to we still have this which you could put a bit in and you still have this which you could put a bit in but because there's so much in the middle of this these are going to get very tight if you start putting more in when you have all of that in. But that shows you what they can hold. They can hold I think almost the equivalent of a wallet of a small purse. 
this one maybe you think this one actually looks fuller when it's open it does probably because it zips down here so that doesn't hold it as tight when you look at this one whenever you have everything in it it's only got this little gusset going so it probably doesn't stretch just as far open this one probably stretches wider it would be easier to maneuver through your cards in this one because this zips down so if you're going to be using as much as this in one of these this one is going to be easier to get your cards out and get your money out you can see when that goes down there's definitely more maneuvering room to get in and out of that and I don't think it takes away from it whenever you zip it up because I think it still looks pretty neat and pretty tidy for the amount that I have in that and that still has the cards down the back. This one I think you can just get as much in but I do think you would have a harder job getting your bits and pieces in and out whenever you were looking to retrieve something. That is a overview and a quick review of all three of these pieces. If you do want to have a more in-depth look at any of these or you have any specific questions do please come into the comment box and let me know what it is specifically you would like to know about each of these and I will try to answer it for you. One thing I should show you is the wear color coming on to the button on my Rectiverso. You can, I don't know if the camera is going to show it, but it is a brass button and the brass is coming off it. You can see at the edges, around the edges where it says Louis Vuitton, it's starting to get the silver underneath it and the brass is, is starting to wear off and that's from wear and tear and use on the button. The same thing has happened to my Agenda GM, which is used quite often. It's come off that as well. Thank you so much for watching this. If it has been helpful, please do give it a thumbs up. If you would like any more info, just let me know. Thank you so much for being here. Please take care and I will see you again in the next one.